I'm at the TEDx in Leicester and really, really just been blown away by Tory King. Just an incredible talk, inspiring, but also really got me fired up around archaeology and just that pa so passionate. And for the people who were watching, uh, you know, weren't lucky enough to be in the room in there. Can you just tell our audience and our viewers who you are and what you've just spoken about? Right, well I'm Dr. Turi King and I'm a lecturer in genetics and archaeology at the University of Leicester and I've just been talking about the Richard III case because I led the DNA analysis in that. And also what I'd like to find out more about is how did you get involved in the TEDx Leicester? Oh, okay. Well, um, I got contacted by City, who was looking for speakers. And I said, yes, no problem, I can do that. I'd heard, of, obviously, of TED Talks and knew of TEDx. So I said, yes, no problem, happy to. But you're, a, I suppose not the word veteran, but you're an experienced speaker. And you've traveled the globe on your subject and inspiring people and what what it is and every day we're making history but you bring history alive on stage you work your mojo to every <laughs> inch of it and yeah. What are you open for that people will take away from today? Well, I, I really love my science, and I love that it's science and history combined. And so I just hope to get people interested in science and what science can do, and particularly girls. So I've got two daughters, and my biggest thing is they've got no real role models for women in science. So for me, that's one of the biggest things to do, be a role model. How can we encourage more role models then um, in science? Do you think more females? Well, I think both, actually. I mean, I think that's the thing. It has to be both encouraging, but bringing the science to life is obviously the really big thing, making it interesting. Now, I happen to be incredibly lucky because the Richard III story, it's pretty hard to make it boring. I think you'd have to do it in a monotone. But I think it's that thing, it's kind of bringing science to life, making it accessible to the public, and just getting people out there, particularly talking to school kids, I think is really the way to go. What? is on the future for you then? What excites you at the moment? Right, well I'm still working on Richard, so I'm filling, finishing off his whole genome. So this is looking at not just the bits of DNA to do the identification, but we've already got things like hair colour and eye colour and this sort of thing. So I'm still going to be working on that for a while. And I would like to ask, how would you encourage people to come to the TEDx next year? Come! <laughs> You get some amazing speakers, really amazing ideas, thought-provoking. Yeah, definitely come. And they're in nice little bite-sized chunks, so that's good. They're 18 minutes long at most, so they're nice little bite-sized chunks, and you get to learn stuff. Definitely come. Um, what got you into this in the first place? Because well, it's obviously it's in your DNA, it's in your passion, so what... what when was the time you first got excited about what you do now? Well, I, my research in the past has been on the link between surnames and genetics and also the Viking migration to Britain. So there, I've been lucky, I've been working in stuff that's of interest to the general public, genetic genealogy and things like this. And I just started thinking, well, this is a nice way of introducing the science in kind of an easy way. So I just started giving talks first on that and then Richard III came along and now I'm kind of doing it on steroids. So. <laughs> It's been an absolute pleasure seeing you today and seeing an action and we were just totally blown away by you. The energy, the enthusiasm, the motivation that you've got, it just adds to TED. So thanks so much for today. Thank you. Thank you.